there are five different clinical findings of sexual dysfunction that could point to prostate cancer. Before we talk about those clinical findings, let's talk about prostate cancer and the role of the prostate gland in male reproductive functioning. So prostate cancer is a cancer of the prostate gland and it is actually the most common cancer in males. Now there's an increasing prevalence of prostate cancer with increasing age. So this is going to be the biggest risk factor for getting prostate cancer, older age. So as a male gets older, their chances of getting prostate cancer increases. Now the prostate gland is a male reproductive organ that is located at the base of the bladder. If we look in this image here, here's the prostate gland right here, right below the bladder. And it actually surrounds the urethra. So the urethra actually originates from the bladder and we've got the prostate gland that encircles it. And the prostate gland has particular roles in male reproductive functioning, including adding prostatic fluid to semen. So this prostatic fluid actually makes up about 20 to 30% of the volume of semen. So during sexual activity, sperm that was produced by the testicle and was stored in the epididymis in the back of the scrotum will travel up the vas deferens and then will then enter into what we call the ampulla, where this little gland right here, called the seminal vesicle, adds the majority of the volume of semen, about 80%, and the rest of the volume of semen is contributed to by the prostate gland, that prostatic fluid we talked about before. And that prosthetic fluid contains citric acid, lipids, zinc, prostate-specific antigen, and some other proteins as well. And because the prostate cancer itself encircles and surrounds the urethra, if there is a growth in the prostate, if we look in this image here, here's the urethra. If we've got a cancerous mass that grows, it starts to impinge on the urethra. We can get certain lower urinary tract symptoms like a difficulty with starting urination or what we could also see is complete urinary retention if that cancerous mass completely blocks the urethra. Now, the topic of this lesson is going to be how prostate cancer affects sexual functioning in males. And as we just talked about, the prostate has a particular role in sexual functioning by adding prostatic fluid. So we're going to talk about some of the findings we can see in prostate cancer because of this particular role of the prostate gland. So one of the findings we could see in prostate cancer is what we call hematospermia. So hematospermia is actually blood in the sperm. So there can be some cases where there's red bloods found in the ejaculate. And the reason that we can get blood in the ejaculate is because blood from tissue injury, so if there's a cancer in the prostate, the prostate gland can become injured, there could be a bit of blood that gets mixed in with that prostatic fluid, or the cancer itself could bleed or be more easily likely to bleed. And there can again be blood in that prostatic fluid. So that blood could be shown in the ejaculate or the semen. Now this may actually be an early finding of prostate cancer even before other symptoms. So if a patient has hematospermia, it's important to think about prostate cancer screening. So very important, especially if it's an older individual. Another finding we could see is reduced ejaculate. So there can be a reduction in volume of ejaculate in patients who have prostate cancer. You can imagine that because the prostate gland is involved in producing prostatic fluid and adding that prostatic fluid to make up some of that semen volume, if we have a cancer there, that cancer is essentially taking up that space. It takes up the functional prostate tissue. So there's less functional prostate tissue to produce some of that prostatic fluid. So we end up getting less prostatic fluid produced and a smaller amount of ejaculate formed. So that is also another possible finding we could see in patients who have prostate cancer. And this also could be an earlier finding of prostate cancer as well. We can also see painful ejaculation occurring in some patients. So pain during ejaculation can occur. So the reason that this can occur is that during ejaculation, there's smooth muscle in the prostate gland that contracts to release the prostatic fluid. So this is how that prostatic fluid is added to the semen. And you can imagine that if there's a cancerous mass, that contraction by that smooth muscle can contract onto the cancerous mass and elicit pain. So that could also occur in some patients who have prostate cancer as well. Another possibility is erectile dysfunction. So difficulty achieving and or maintaining an erection could also be another finding. This may be due to nerve involvement and or hormonal changes. So the cancer's growth may impact surrounding nerves, for instance. And another important point to note here is that the treatments for prostate cancer can also do this as well. So surgery to remove the prostate gland, so a radical prostatectomy, and hormonal therapy, so antiandrogen therapy, can also contribute to this as well. And 
if a patient knows they have cancer, they can have some psychiatric effects that prevent them from achieving or maintaining an erection as well. So there are some psychiatric effects here as well. And finally, we can also see reduced libido in patients as well. So there's reduced sexual desire in general. The prostate cancer itself may lead to sexual desire reductions, but it's likely that it's when the patient knows they have prostate cancer and this affects them psychologically. So again, there may be some influence of the prostate cancer due to hormonal changes. It's more likely that if that is the case, it's going to be the prostate cancer treatment doing that. Again, there's hormonal therapy, so anti-androgen therapy is used for treating prostate cancer. So that's going to reduce testosterone-related activity or effects. So that can definitely reduce libido. And the surgery, that prostatectomy, that removal of the prostate gland may also cause nerve injury leading to reduced sexual desire, reduced libido, and reduced overall frequency of sexual activity. So all of these are potential findings of sexual dysfunction that could point to prostate cancer. But again, a lot of these are going to be things that could occur without prostate cancer. So it's important to think about not just prostate cancer as a possibility for these possible findings, but other factors as well. Please check my other lessons on prostate cancer if you want more information on signs and symptoms. Please also consider joining as a member for members-only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.